Welcome, everybody. I'm Kyle Hines, and I'll be hosting the Players Podcast, a GTM family production in partnership with the EuroLeague Players Association. I will be having in-depth conversations with current and former EuroLeague players about important topics that many athletes face on and off the basketball court. Stay tuned for more episodes. What up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Players Podcast presented, presented by the EuroLeague Players Association. Today, we have a very special guest, you know, one of the legendary figures, in my opinion, of European basketball, of international basketball. Um, you know, his, this guy has accomplished and has done everything. Um, my guy, Atlanta Hawks, current player, Bodan Bodanovic. Bodan, what's up, man? How's everything? Thank you, Kyle, man. It's going well, man. Road trip, you know, um, trying to get through, man, like you. Um, you. You guys have four more games left. We got like 30, so. <laughs> A lot more than us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. That's crazy, Thanks, man. You know? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you're doing well, man. I know you, you just recently came back from an injury, so how's, how's uh, everything with that? How are you feeling? Um, it's going well, it's going better. You know, I just um, recently got off uh, from the restriction minutes. I was playing that that was a tough part, honestly. Uh, maybe first time that I'm experiencing that playing, you know, multiple games through yeah. miniature, you know, and uh, that, that kind of plays with your mind a little bit. I could imagine, <laughs> I could imagine all of a sudden you, you they tell you, you got to come out and you can't play in the middle of the fourth quarter or something like that. <laughs> We were in Orlando. I remember that we were in Orlando. That was my just second game, you know. Yeah. And you know, we missed the game so much. Like, and uh, when you like the game and, and you come back, you want to play. And I was I was bad first half, okay, and I, I was terrible. And then second half, I was I was going off, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen the highlights. Five, seven points, you know. And I was like, yeah, this this is the time. And they, they, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I ran to the locker room. Like, Can I play one, three more minutes? You know, <laughs> <laughs> they killed your groove, man. They killed your groove, man. Crazy. Crazy. That's the that that feeling is crazy. But yeah, it's fun. I mean, trying to get back in a shape, uh, like that basketball shape. You know, yeah. when you are in a night, you know, and producing for the team. Um, yeah, it's been tough year for me a little bit uh, because I got hurt. But uh, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm trying to trying to get back to to normal like everyone else. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely, man. I, I've seen, like I said, I've been watching you know the last couple of games, and I see you starting to get back into your groove, man. You you guys have an exciting team over there, so you know, talk about you know just you know playing with the Atlanta Hawks, and you know you know your adjustment into you know coming to Atlanta, you know experiencing free agency for the first time, and you know, and it seemed like you guys have an exciting young core with you, with Trey, with you know John, and you know a bunch of other young players. You know, so talk about that. I mean, where should I start? <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, let's start with uh, free agency was crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it, this was your first time being a free agent, right? Yeah. 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 Like, it's, you know how it is in Europe is different. Yeah. So there's no um, that type of media, that type of like where he's gonna go, what what the sec is going to do, like. When you're free, you're, you're free. And like I was a yeah. strict free agent. In Europe, there is not such a thing like that. So because there is no draft, okay. Yeah. And, um, and I was a restricted, restricted free agent, and um, I know I was waiting for Friday, you know, for free agency to open. And then yeah. one morning I woke up and I had Corona in that time, and everything was crazy. And you know, and um, I remember I woke up one. 6 a.m. My friend was waking me up, and my agent was on the phone. And, hey, you see this in the media? That's not true. Blah blah blah. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. I was like, I, I would just woke up. I didn't even know. You know. It, it, what, you know what's crazy on? too? I sent you a DM because I see, I see. That, like, of course, everybody here was talking about Milwaukee. So I send you a DM, and I was like, Yo, man, congratulations. You know, blah 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 yeah, blah, everyone, blah blah blah. Yeah. So I was like. <laughs> My friends and family too. Like I didn't know what to tell them. Yeah, like, they they're gonna say I'm lying. Like you know I'm lying. <laughs> He's lying. There's no way. Like you know they gotta believe it. like words and this stuff, Twitter and all that. You know they yeah. gotta believe it. You know it's not a lie. It's like maybe a bad info, or whatever. But yeah, crazy stuff happened happened during these two days. You know, and then 
my free agency finally started. I flew over here in uh, USA and uh, uh, I got a deal from Atlanta. Uh, and uh, it was crazy. I didn't know what's going to happen, you know, yeah. and should I believe, uh, you know, agents? Should I believe my friend's family? Like, what should I do? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sec is calling me too. Like, yeah. what should I do? Like, you know, and this all calls, like, it's, it's crazy. It's a new experience for you. And then, um, you know, finally, um, after I signed that, like, uh, offer sheet with uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, I was waiting for, like, three days. It, it's supposed to be 48 hours. Yeah. But because Sunday, they put extra day for, like, another 24. And I didn't know that. And I was waiting for a clock to pick the 12 to see where I'm going. I'm in Miami. I don't know where you, I'm going to go. You have no idea. <laughs> Can you settle in if I'm if I'm leaving sec if I yeah. if I'm staying, you know I have to and it was it was it was weird honestly, but first time going through that I I realized that's 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 that's, that's NBA free agency that's a yeah. real NBA free agency. And, uh, till the last moment you don't know nothing and I'm glad everything was done you know after that and I was um, I I moved quickly to Atlanta you know um, I I knew already a couple of guys you know from the league. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know each other. You play multiple times against, uh, against some guys. I know obviously Gallo from from mm -hmm. uh, from Europe. You know, play international basketball a lot. I knew Trey from uh, this like rookie uh, world against the uh, USA game. Mm -hmm. And you know, you you meet a lot of yeah. guys through mm -hmm. uh, through basketball. And uh, yeah, that accepted me well. Um, we we started well. Then we had so many guys that got hurt. Then we lost the rhythm at the beginning, you know. Um, we started like 4-1. We had one, one of the best starts in NBA. And then we lost like a couple games in a row. And then we lost another games, you know. And we, we couldn't capture rhythm, you know. And a lot of guys got hurt at that time, uh, including me as well. And uh, we just couldn't stay healthy, mm -hmm. you know. And now we got back all healthy, almost yeah. everyone. Like, and we still missed one more guy. Um, and, um, yeah, we caught a rhythm, you know, eight, eight games is, 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 is a big stretch. It's tough to win. It's tough to win any games in, in a row in NBA, you know? And, um, yeah, that, that, that says we're a good team, but, um, yeah, we lost recently against the Clippers, mm -hmm. um, the, which, which we should won, you know, we were up by 20, 22 mm -hmm. at some point, but you know, they came up with the second, third unit, you know, and, yeah, they look ass over there, you know. But uh, that that that's that's something that that can happen in NBA. Like yeah, that's that's that's, that's NBA, man. That's NBA basketball. Relax. That's what I learned here. Like there is no point that you can relax. Mm -hmm. Up thirty, you can relax. The teams are coming at you so fast. They can they can catch around 15-0 in two minutes, mm -hmm. three minutes. They mm -hmm. can, you know that type of stuff happens here. So um, yeah, just looking to find another. Uh, right now in this situation, you know, trying to look uh, to find another winning streak, nothing else to start I, over right. Now, how has this, this season been for you? Um, you know, obviously, you know, you're, you're in a situation with the COVID protocols and, you know, you're unable to really leave. And then, you know, even with the bubble, you were in the bubble, um, you know, with SAC. You know, how difficult was, for, was it for you, you know, not able to, you know, be with your family or your friends and, you know, be in America. And then I'm sure like your parents and everybody's in Belgrade and unable to, you know, see them and touch them in the middle of this coronavirus. Like, how was that? How was that for you during that time? You know, I was, uh, uh, when I was younger and I was in Belgrade, I didn't understand, you know, um, being a homesick, Yeah. you know, when we have the foreigners over there, um, I didn't understand. Let's say James Gist. I think he was he was going back to to United States for a couple of days just to see his dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I, could, I just couldn't understand. Yeah. You know, from this point I understand him now. Like, you know, <laughs> just needed to go home and see it. You know, uh, was going out there to fill out with the friends and um, um, yeah, it's tough. And um, I, I'm sure you know. You know, when when you're far from a family and friends. Yeah you grew up with and and uh, you cannot like touch and communicate with them and um it's just weird like we, we're living in in, in today's that uh, 
that you can talk with somebody and you can you can see him actually on a camera and everything yeah. but that, that's not enough that's real you know when you talk with someone in person that's that's real talk you know and uh it's different it's yeah. different and uh yeah the, the first year i experienced it it was like when when i was living in istanbul that's close to serbia you know that's yeah. like changing the state but this is really overseas this is yeah. time zones is different uh, sleeping i'm i'm working in an uh, opposite you know so um it, 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 it was it, the transition was was hard at the beginning mm -hmm. first couple of months in, in SEC, you know when i was in sec when i was when i just moved here uh but now with the with the corona and, and all the stuff like bubble was easy man bubble mm -hmm. you know really there, how, you, it was it was an easy experience for you they they you know what they did for us man like they they put like um it was hundred of what 200 people in two, 200 players mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. you no know? and it was like two thousand people running around for us yes so, so <laughs> yeah it was, I'm, it was, I'm, it was I'm, I'm sure from you like coming from partisan and coming from you know yeah. all these situations you're like man this is basketball heaven like it don't get no better than this man. <laughs> you see all these players around you know like you you interact with them and you can you know you build a relationship you know and everyone was cool and um yeah you, you, I, i'm not gonna say it was tough you know yeah. i don't know we stayed there for a short time yeah, yeah. you know but for us it was from my perspective it wasn't tough mm -hmm. you know because i know it was like 10 games left that's it like we played these 10 games we're gonna stay there for a month and that's it that's like another like tournament uh mm -hmm. you know in, in the national tournament, which i got used to it and um and uh this season how it started you know i thought it, it's gonna be easy mm -hmm. but it's not you know you're going in some of the nice cities let's say like uh miami la you know new york at the beginning we went to new york and i had a lot of friends there but yeah. i couldn't see it yeah, you couldn't you know, see it yeah i can't get out of the hotel i cannot invite them there uh you're in a hotel so you're not in New York, you're in a hotel, yeah. you're in a and, and, hotel. And I, I, I would think that's total opposite of what the typical NBA lifestyle is. Because usually when you go to city yeah. to city, you're able to go to different restaurants, you're able to do certain things. And now yeah. to be almost back to European lifestyle, I guess you could say like, you know, when you're on the road yeah. and you're expected yeah. to stay in the hotel and can't go anywhere. <laughs> so much more games, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit... Uh... Um, he's a little bit tougher than I expected, but you know, yeah. no, we are all in situations, so can't complain about it. Now let's go back. Um, you know, I want to go back to, you know, your, your, your league days and to your partisan days. Um, I think I remember you make it, you made your, your league debut, but I think when you played against us when we were in Cheska, if I'm not correct, and you had like a 29 or 28 point game or something like that, you had a crazy game against us. Now I, I asked that to say two questions. The first question I asked making compare your EuroLeague debut with Partizan to your NBA debut which were you more nervous about at the time uh I think Partizan yeah <laughs> no it, it was my city yeah it was my city. I already I didn't have any experience of basketball like yeah. pro basketball in front of the fans and all that and you know how it is over there man it's, yes it's crazy, you know and uh in, in 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 a good way crazy you know and uh it, it's fun to play there yeah. you know and yeah it was it was uh, so first year league debut was uh i think besiktas yeah. on, on a run. um and uh second one was at home csk you're right yeah yeah we played the overtime i remember and i missed yeah. that shot yeah i remember i remember <laughs> i remember <laughs> uh yeah and it was it was crazy man i remember i was so nervous the night before that you know uh, I didn't came I didn't came home before twelve. We had some uh, like deal with the with the coach Dushko yeah. then, that we have to make home at, before twelve. You know, <laughs> nah, I think twelve fifteen or something like that. He was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous. I thought he, he's not gonna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> extra pressure for me to play even better. Uh, but that pressure is good, man. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it it was fun. Uh, definitely, definitely, that was that was a more nervous game. Mm -hmm. This one was nervous in a different way because I was my first. It was preseason game. I'm I'm gonna call that as a, as a, my debut, mm -hmm. and it was here in SEC, and I was I was subbing Winscarter. 
Like, it has to be like, Vince, I got you. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was, and I'm guarding Manu Ginobili on yeah. the other side. Man. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. That's... These two guys, when I was growing up, you know, that I was like, just looking at them on the TV, like another kid, you know, mm -hmm. and Vince, you know, Vince was globally popular as well yeah. as Manu, but Vince more because at that time, uh, you know, all these clips uh, um, was on the phones and yeah. it was just a couple of clips. You know? And one of these couple of clips was wins dunk, dunk yeah. contest, right? Yeah, yeah. And someone, then you pass it around through the infrared. You remember that? Like, yeah. Pair the two phones yeah, like you that. pair the phones together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's cool. And I oh, played with that. Oh, man. That's funny, man. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's funny. Now, um, when did you realize, and going back to EuroLeague when you're playing for Partizan, when did you realize that you were a high level EuroLeague player? Is it a moment? Is it, you know, when you had your career high against us? Was it, you know, when, when, when did you feel like, you know, like I, I can play at a high level, you know, um, during this time? And then also, you know, at the same time, like I said, I keep comparing it going back to the NBA. When did you realize that you had a legitimate shot at being an NBA player or that you were an NBA player? <laughs> Um, I think at that like first game when you play the first game, yeah, you know you're scared. You know, yeah. like you're scared. You think like the guys are, the the guys look even better in your eyes. I feel mm -hmm. you go on the floor and you actually like compete against them. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, and yeah, probably that game CSK. You know, uh, but but then I had a couple of games like where I played bad. Yeah, and I didn't know. I was confused then. Uh, you know, where I'm going to have, and I was thinking, I was keep thinking about like when I'm going to find again mm -hmm. that game mm -hmm. uh, that I played against the state. And um, you being nervous, like what's going to happen with you, uh, then you're getting the lower minutes. Uh, you know, when you're playing good, you're getting rewarded. Yeah. When you're not playing good, someone else, is get, someone else is getting rewarded, right? Someone else has to play good, you know? And, um, I feel like uh, you don't really know. You don't really know. From from my perspective, was I I didn't know that right at the moment, moment I'm gonna go in NBA and I'm yeah. I'm gonna be this good in it. All right, but uh, you know I was going step by step. Mm -hmm. My way was like okay, let me let me just try to make the squad in partisan. Mm -hmm. Let me let me be in rotation. Let me find a role. And then I was going like steps, slow steps. That, that yeah. was my career, you know. I I, I wasn't like, I, wa I wasn't recognized as the, like a super talented guy yeah. in the young generation. You know, I, I show up late in, uh, in this like draft prospects and all this like internet stuff. Um, I wasn't at the like top 10 picks in my generations in mm -hmm. that time. So, um, I was ne never that talented. All right, so I, I was trying to find my way. All right, and uh, um, we had a junior league where I played well. That's mm -hmm. that's where I saw like I can I can become a pro. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the first time I saw that, and then I was like, okay, now is the time to try. You know, to fight for that uh, like role and, and spot yeah. in a team, yeah, in rotation. And it was hard when you see all these guys in front of you, like mm -hmm. they're all the legends of partisan and. Uh, you know, uh, they, 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 they are there for many years and you don't know when they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know. Um, <laughs> if you're going to get that opportunity. It's winning, yeah. you know, we're winning. So you, you don't change nothing. And there's some young guys in front of you that you have to wait a line for it, you know. And um, all the like pressure and uh, like figuring out, like, um, honestly, I didn't, I didn't work as hard when I was 18, 19, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't realize it. I thought I'm, I'm just going to go out and hoop. Yeah. You know, that's what I was doing, like playing video games and going hoop, playing video mm -hmm. games and going hoop. And um, then they put you in a game and then you're completely lost. Yeah. Like, you know, they try to give you some chance, you know, and I didn't see that as an opportunity, you know, because I, I was looking at that like a garbage time, you know. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it doesn't matter. We are up 30, whatever I do. It doesn't matter, but it actually does matter. If you're yeah. ready for that, next time you're going to get rewarded. Yeah. You know, 
a key, you don't understand it. And then I got lucky, you know, that um, coach uh, Dusko Vjočević yeah. uh, got back partisan and, uh, you know, he was, he wanted to start over with a young group of the guys and he liked me and uh, he gave me opportunity, you know, and he was, and he gave me opportunity to work with him, you know, yeah. he, he was really dedicated to me and he was like, you know, he was 100% with me, like, you know, he, he was focused with me on my work, on my, like, he was teaching me how to be pro and what, what, what do you need to become a pro and, you know, what do you need to, to be ready every single night to, you know, produce. Yeah, I'm a, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk more about Coach Dusko um, during the second part of our conversation. I want to try to get more into, you know, his role in your career and, and how he helped you kind of develop your, your work ethic. But before we leave the, the partisan conversation, we have to talk about the rivalry, the partisan Red Star rivalry. And, you know, for you, I just want you to explain to the people that, you know, never been a part of it, have never witnessed it. Um, you know, I'm sure some of your teammates, you know, even yeah, ask you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's it, I, the same. I, I would say, I would say it's, the, I would say it's the same, and 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 that's why I want to hear from your perspective. You know, you know, as somebody that's you know from you know from there, um, you know, what is that atmosphere like, and and what does that game mean to the city of Belgrade? You know, when it when it happens. Um, so Derby is one of like. You know, it, 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 it became a traditional game for our, you yeah. know, our, our country you now. And um, I, I realized that, um, you know, there is a huge difference between NBA fans and Europe, Europe fans. Because mm -hmm. NBA fans are more like focused on the guys coming out of the college and individuals as the players. So they follow, let's say, Lembro James' career. Yeah. They follow him from um from the high school to cleveland to wherever he goes everyone goes right in europe is like um okay i'm my family is partisan family mm -hmm. and i like partisan I'm going into partisan games it's all about a partisan all right and the players are comes and goes you know they they come in they do their part mm -hmm. and and get out that's it but partisan stays you know yeah. and that's no matter what it's a culture and um, yeah, exactly. And then you know, in uh, in a school, you know, you're a partisan or red star, and and you have to choose a side. You're like you have to. At some point, you have no, to. No, no, no choice. <laughs> yeah, like you have to. Like some 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 kids are going at a partisan game. Some mm -hmm. you know, is it soccer or basketball? But some of these sports, yeah. But uh, it's 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 for sure a culture, and and I can say that it's the same in the Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, same in Greece, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of in, in a lot of like European countries, it's a, it's it's a lifestyle that people live there. You know, uh, here everyone is um, moving a lot. Yeah. Like they they fly state to state. Kids are going on different colleges. There is and it's one country, all right? And it's it's a huge country. And mm -hmm. uh, there is a league that NBA and um, it's um, it's well run business. Yeah. Right. And, uh, over there is more about like. Uh, getting sport involved in in um, in society yeah you know and a lot of a lot of teams are uh, not owned by the owners in in uh, in Europe it's yeah. owned by the government uh, by yeah. the country you know part owners there is a president and there is yeah. elections but, I, I say uh, I say all the time like it, I mean the they're all like a I guess a placeholder owner but really like majority of the clubs in in Europe are owned by the fans like they're owned by the fans, they're owned by the city, like, you know, because they're the ones that kind of give the city, I mean, give the club its spirit. You know, the partisan fans are the reason why the, you know, the club is the club, you know, even though it may be owned by somebody else or Red Star or Olympiaco. So that's what I always say when people ask me, I'm like, you know, the the the, the fans, the pity, the, the people in the city, those are the people that kind of give the give the spirit and give the environment of the, of the you know, of the games and stuff like people that. that. Yeah. They love that and they, they enjoy it. You know, they go out there, and they they have fun they yeah. have fun you know, uh getting emotional getting frustrated yeah. uh, letting go out they cursing you know they all all the stuff but that's a culture over there yeah. is it good i don't know i don't know the answer on it you know yeah. <laughs> like is it <laughs> i don't know the answer i cannot tell you yeah, yeah. who never experienced it he doesn't know like yeah. you know and uh exactly i i don't 
you can you can change that. Like, uh, yeah. of course, it's not good when someone we know that. But yeah. at a game, at that point, like you know, that's what brings fun to the like to that part. And yeah. as a player, when you're like, it brings you out, okay, I'm gonna show you. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah it's fun. now now going to going to Fenerbahce. And in having the mm-hmm. opportunity to play for such a legendary coach um, like Obranovich, what was that experience like? And and what did you what did you learn from him? You know, during your time with with Fenerbahce. Uh, so to don't skip the steps, I will tell you. Um, yeah. With with Dushko, I was I was uh, Dushko Yoshevich. I was working more on like my my game. Like, yeah. uh, you know, he was teaching me a lot. Of, like. Um, uh, individual things, all right. And and Jelko, it's the guy who um, wants to win. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, for him, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, how old are you, how young are you. If you can play, you play. Mm-hmm. And there is no like, you know, you can play. You can you can help the team to win the games. You playing, mm-hmm. and there is you cannot hide that. He is playing the players to win the game. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about contracts. Uh, how old are you? How young are you? He's playing you to win the game. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I learned from him um, a lot of stuff, man. I don't know, like especially in the game stuff, how to read the game, how to see the game differently, and how to. Um, I'm not gonna say I was selfish and partisan, but since I, uh, I, I just didn't see it. I, yeah. I didn't see that. that there's another option, which which you know? makes sense. Which makes sense. You're a young player, and I mean, in and you're, just, yeah, you're supposed to be selfish. I mean, you're supposed to be selfish at that at that point of your career, right? You're working on your game, and yeah. you, you think if I don't score, it's not good. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's a different with Jericho. I learned um, that different part that the trust between the players, the like. To make the basketball simple, mm-hmm. you know, simple for you, like you and me together, we are playing yeah. together. And he he taught he taught me about that, you know. And whoever um, wanted to play uh, his way, he didn't play. Yeah, you know. And I had the moment when I tried to play my way, and he 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 surely let me know, like not just me, everyone, everyone is not that you know he. And th- that's what I what I liked about him at the beginning. I didn't, of course, and no one likes it at the beginning. Yeah. But then you start winning and you're feeling good. Yeah. And then everyone feels good. Yeah. And then you know, um, you see what it's all about. And then yeah. you make it to the final four. And then um, you know, you uh, <laughs> he was never satisfied. He was mad that the first year. You know, I was happy we made it to the final four. Yeah, and that, that's know? for him. That's that's. <laughs> yeah, he was mad. <laughs> like, you know, we played Real Madrid in the, in the Madrid. They were champions after that. Yeah, he was mad the, the way we approached the game. He said, you you were satisfied. You were satisfied with all of it. Yeah, that's why we lost. And he was right. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's just one game. That's yeah. just in, in final four is just one game. Everyone can beat anybody. Like you, you, you've been a part of uh, that, like Olympi Olympiacos and uh, and CSK and yeah. Uh, like all these Any, games, anything can happen. <laughs> anything right? can happen. Yeah, it's one game. So yeah, I, I mean, you know it, you know it. But you know, I, I feel, I feel like with his experience, he was, he was reading as well. You know, mm-hmm. and he saw it. He, he, yeah, but I definitely learned um, a lot of a lot of stuff from him, and and uh, he was he was the right step for me. You know, as yeah. a coach. It was a really right step from ne- that next level of basketball, like how to, um, how to get, how to be a scorer and a playmaker, and how to be like complete player. Now, winning you talked about before the the two Final Four defeats that you had. Now, talk about winning the Euro League championship and and winning in Istanbul. Like, how was that for you? You know, like you said, a kid growing up watching Euro League and you know having an opportunity to participate in it. How was it winning? Finally, winning that title after, like you said, the two close Final Four defeats. Man, it was tough, man. It was because because people they they just see the final part, of it, right? Yeah, when exactly. You, Team and the uh, final one, they supposed to win, blah blah. Mm-hmm. But it's not like that. We were the team we were building from the the first year. The Jelko came, 
you know, he was trying to build something. Okay, first year maybe he didn't because he already had some players, but second yeah. year he brought some players. It was like a Great five, team. like a four or five year process, right, or something like that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it, something. it was. It was three. It was three. 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 Yeah. After that, you know, they 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 kept coming. Wait, we have to press the pause. One, yeah. I just have to hold up. One second. Okay. Yeah. I'm forbidden. My bad. How you good, man? <laughs> Pre-game meal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You tell me. I can continue. I can go. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the real NBA life. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we were we were building. I remember, you know, uh, we had a core of the guys like Jan, Vesely, mm -hmm. Ekpe, um, Ricky was there, yeah. uh, Alina, you know, um, Slukas, yeah, Bobby, we brought Bobby, Bobby Dixon. Ali, I don't know. I don't know which name. Is. <laughs> Ali Mohammed. Yeah, Ali. <laughs> Ali. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we had a couple pieces next year, but you know that that first year that we built the team, you know, we had a uh, couple of players there that they were already one year with uh, yeah. with Jelko. Yeah. And uh, Bielica was there too. He was MVP that year, but he left. Uh, he played in NBA mm -hmm. uh, after that. Uh, and that that second year with Fener, I felt like what is what it's like to build a team. Mm -hmm. you know and you have new guys coming in you know you have to build that trust level you know they they're surely they surely came there you know to to play and show that uh uh that they they belong there you mm -hmm. know and they're they're paid for that to to do that job you know to do that part of the job and that's that pressure as a player that you have coming in a new team mm -hmm. all right and then I feel like he was um, he was always good in handling those like um, relationships, mm -hmm. you know. And he was making sure that everyone um, everyone feels good about what he wants and what he wants from us, you know. And 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 the process was tough, you know. First year was fun yeah. because you know at the beginning we didn't play well, uh, we couldn't manage to win some games. But as soon as we clicked, you know, we start going and we start winning. We start winning. You know, I remember my first year in Fenner, we didn't, we won zero trophies. And mm -hmm. that was like first time for Željko to don't win a trophy, like with a team in your league. And then second year, uh, second year, uh, we won the Presidential Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we won a cup, like a Turkish Cup. And then we won at the end of the league. We, mm -hmm. we played finals that year and we lost for the one rebound. The mm -hmm. third year, Jelko was, uh, I, I cannot forget that. Like every meeting, every meeting we had, and every like, every time we play bad, uh, every time we lose the game, just remember, we lost because of one rebound. Like that, wow. that was huge. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> small detail, wow. Or yeah, it's small detail, but he knows how to hit the point, you know? Yeah. Or when, you, when we were playing good and we were feeling good about ourselves. Hey, don't 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 get too high. Like you know, yeah. stay 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 down. Like we lost because of a rebound, and um, yeah, it was that building process. You know, then we have uh, uh, I got hurt, Young got hurt, Ekpe um, got hurt for a short time, um, and it was tough. And I thought we gonna uh, we were in position like we were eight or something. We were yeah, I remember. For, I remember. Last, Last game was Barcelona game at home. They're out of the playoffs, and we are fighting for that eighth spot. And uh, it was similar similar situation like for you now, guys. Yeah. Like, but it was last. Game. Yeah. And we can finish uh, at the fifth place, or we can drop out of the out of the league. But then um, uh, the who who play Caja Laboral back mm -hmm. then. Uh, they they lost against I don't know who Jalgiris or somebody, and they dropped. We won Barca in overtime at home, mm -hmm. and we played bad. It was a bad game. I remember it was a terrible game, but we won somehow. I don't mm -hmm. even know. 
<laughs> and um, at that point, like we were going for, uh, we, we were fifth and Panathinaikos was fourth. And we, we didn't have a confidence back then. We mm -hmm. were all mad at each other, you know, the way we play and okay, we waste one more year here, blah, 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 you know. We were all like, we didn't click yet, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you feel that when everything is going. And somehow, I don't know what happened, but we were down at halftime um, at Panathinaikos game, like 16, 13, I don't know. They were, they were killing us. And we thought like, okay, this is right now. And we were like, we were really like, we found something in, inside. For me, it was like, uh, personally, it was like, okay, this is the moment. I, I got to take over. I don't yeah. care. I'm not going to listen to nobody right now. Not, not even... I need to win now, you know, because I know, you know, I can win. Like, we can win. We are good enough. And somehow, you know, I found the rhythm. Uh, these two games, the third game, we won at home. Mm -hmm. And we, we played um, um, unbelievable um, final four as well. Like, the semifinals, the way we were communicating, we were running on the floor. We felt confidence, you know. But I feel like that first game, the, the, after the second half of the game, we realized like, okay, this is, we were, we are pushed back to the wall. We are touching the wall and someone is pushing us from the front, you know, and there is nowhere to go. Like we gotta, we gotta play now. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I let's knew play that. the hardest we can. I knew from like, uh, I knew from the, the, when you guys won that Panther Nickel series, after I think it was game one or game two, whatever game you guys won, I knew you guys were going to win your league, mm -hmm. even though like I wanted us to win. But I was like, I could, I can just tell. You could tell like certain teams are clicking at the right time and they're playing at the right time. I was like, and it's in Istanbul. I was like, they're going, they're going to win. I was like, they're going to win. The, they're going to win the final four for sure. It, it's really about that momentum, yeah. really. Like year before that, we were, we was really good at the end of the year. Like we were, we were, like I don't know, we didn't lost uh, last couple games, and then we beat Madrid. It was easy playoffs for us. It was three zero. But it was easy, you know. Th these first two games were tough for us in playoffs. We we still won 3-0, but it was really tough. The first two games in uh, in Panathinaikos gym, it was really tough games. And then third one was easy because you know you know how it goes. Yeah. And uh, we played at home. And uh, yeah, but that momentum is like when the team started clicking, and you know CSK. I remember, like you said, for the. Um, uh, for us that you knew we we're gonna win yeah like we wasn't sure but we had that like inside of it we we knew like somehow this is us this is our yeah. time you yeah. know and but we didn't feel that way in berlin i i cannot tell we we felt that that way like that mm -hmm. confident we know like we're gonna we're gonna play the csk in the finals we yeah. we know we're gonna play the csk and we was ready for that but we didn't know uh, how it's, we're gonna win. it's funny how like usually the teams that win euroleague are usually teams that go through some type of adversity throughout the year. They usually have like an injury or, and they're like usually the team that's like the fifth or fourth seed. And then all of a sudden, like you said, they just have momentum at the right time and they click and that's when they win. Like it's, it's been like that, I guess the last, I would say maybe I guess five or six years, six, seven years, you know, since maybe since Olympiacos, the team I have with Olympiacos when we won, it's been like that way. It's been like, you know, the team that has the most adversity and they just find a way to win, man. It's been, it's been crazy that way. I feel like when you go through the tough stuff, yeah. like there is nothing left, and yeah. there is you cannot lose anything after it. And then you you just you just play free. I think yeah. everyone and and that's that's what happens. I agree. I agree. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Serbian national team, um, and just just to you, you know, like you said, you talked about it before. Like you weren't, uh, I guess you could say. Uh, the the top player of your generation you weren't like the you know player that everybody thought was going to be who you are now growing up so what did it mean for you to to have the opportunity to represent you know your country you know in a, a world championship and in, 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 in the olympics and and to be you know to be um you know to be successful what was that moment like you know when you guys were sitting on the the podium uh, you know of the of the silver medal of the olympics and hearing the national anthem like describe that moment to that moment to me yeah, it's unbelievable, man. And um, I will tell you this: when I was a kid, you know, I was um, I was watching that, and there was like something that, that that's your dream. Yeah. You, you don't you, you see our guys like it was two thousand two when our guys won the gold medal. Mm -hmm. You know, 
was like a biggest success um, uh, of the, of the sports in, in back then, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, basketball was always our like most popular sport, uh, one of the most popular sports in, uh, in. And back then it was special, especially popular uh, because we the guys we had, you know, in your league, the guys we had in national team, they all play like in NBA as well. They all play on yeah. basketball. They were they were really uh, really important for their teams. And, um, you know, seeing that as a, I don't know, eight years old, 10 years old kid, you know, um, seeing all the, all the success over there and, um, and, and see how, how they're celebrating on a balcony. We have a big balcony in, in mm-hmm. front of the government in Belgrade and seeing all that crowd in front of like, you, you see that and you look up on it like, oh, one day I might be there, but you, but you don't think it, yeah. but, you know, that's something that's something like impossible to reach at that mm-hmm. point you know you see wow i, I want to be there as a kid you know i just want to be there to see how it is and you don't you don't you don't understand you just see that feeling inside of you and i'm sure everyone does it you know yeah, um, yeah it was it was hard process you know and um i didn't play for my young generations uh national team except the 18 19 and 20. i played mm-hmm. like when i was eight usually guys are starting with like to join the national team in there 15 16 maybe 14 i don't know but uh 16 for sure 15, 17 as well um you know and i joined the like my generation when i was 18 mm-hmm. and it was it was a slow process for me you know um going through stuff uh same same stuff you know or trying to earn the spot in national team trying to earn the spot in a, a a squad you know in a, in a senior team and then when i was 21 um, uh, I was lucky as well. I always bring the, the, the lucky part. You, you, yeah. at the end of the day, you're putting all of the work, everything. At the end of the day, you you gotta be lucky as well, you know, to be ready in the right moments. To, you know, to you need the coach that likes you and mm-hmm. that, that, that you need all the stuff to happen. You know, yeah, everything to, fall in place at the right time. That time, like, and that time, my national team wasn't that good. You know, they, they, they were qualifying for the Euro, uh, Euro basket and they qualified. And then the coach, Dude Evkovic, decided to go with the young guys next championship mm-hmm. to change the generation and to go over with the new guys. And we were the youngest team over there. But what did, uh, uh, we had only like three veterans there. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Stefan Markovic, Nenad mm-hmm. Krstic uh, and uh, Nemanja Vjelic. Mm-hmm. And then it was 24. Five, six, I don't even know. And, you know, he, he was young, pretty yeah, young. Stephen. Young veteran. <laughs> Curly was only one who was, you know, a yeah. little bit. Curly you know. at 24 looked like he was old veteran, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it was, you know, it, it was fun for us because we had a lot of freedom. You know, he, he was just, uh, he basically was telling us, okay, in offense, do whatever you want. We play through the Curly. And um, uh, in defense, I want to play as hard as you can. And that's it. We're running. We are, we are young bulls and we just go out there and we run and we play free. And uh, at that point, we we end up seven. But that, that, that last game we beat Italy, I think, it was the game that qualifies us for next um, uh, World Cup mm-hmm. in Spain. And it was, it turns out to be like, we, we didn't have a success that everyone expected. You know, of course, as a Serbian, but uh, um, uh, we actually had a success with that team. Yeah, I will say that. You know, lost against uh, Spain, that they were really tough for us. You know, at that moment, and um, we beat uh, the the France that, that they won at the end. Mm-hmm. You know, we uh, we played we beat Lithuania in the group phase as well. That they, they played the finals against the France. So it was, it was, you know, um, it was, it was good momentum for us, uh, um, experiencing all that and having freedom, you know, to do mistakes and to learn from the losses. And then next year we qualify for uh, World Cup. Uh, no one did expect nothing from us, and we we went over there, no pressure, and and the right momentum we clicked, you know, we find our groove. Mm-hmm. We won four games in a row. Uh, um, the last, uh, 
was it Egypt, I think, or Iran, I don't remember right now. And uh, we won Greece, Brazil, and France, and we end up being in a final. Yeah. And that was it. Like, you know, that's the tournament type of stuff. You've got to be ready for these three, four games. That's it, you know? And I remember Milos was playing unbelievable back then, and yeah. he was leading that stuff with, with a lot of, like, guys that we were, you know, uh, trying to play around him. And then um, you, you at, that, at that point, you feel like you earned that spot in national team. And mm -hmm. at that point, you know, the building around that team, you know, what we're going to do for next summer. But, um, you know, back then, players were, uh, uh, when it wasn't this, like, global and uh, when players were playing only in their countries and you didn't yeah. have so many foreigner players coming over, only one, you know, national team game was, like, bigger stage. Yeah. Why? A lot of players could, you can see a lot of players competing, the best players competing against each other on the yeah. stage. And that was the big contract to the players, yeah. you know, because they, they were good there. They're going to be good. They're know? going to be good in the domestic league or Euro league or Euro league. And now you have all these, like, uh, you know, a lot of, like, uh, changes, a lot of, yeah. like, different players in different teams in different countries and everything is getting globalized in, in basketball world and uh, it's getting faster, you know. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that, you know, maybe some kids right now, they're, they're, they're thinking the national team spot is not as important. And you can see that in every national team, not just yeah. in our. Um, but, it, but it's really fun to go out and compete, you know, against the top players from some other country. You know, it's, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah, I can, I can definitely imagine. I mean, having that opportunity to represent your country, I mean, it has to be, it has to be incredible, especially coming from, you know, such a historical place like Serbia and having so many great players. I mean, it has to be, I mean, an outstanding, amazing feeling, man. It's probably nothing like, nothing better than that. And, and the biggest difference, you know, uh, there's no contracts there. Yeah. Like, you playing the best guys you have. Like, you know, you go, go out and, it, the money is not involved in that game. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really just you're paying for pride. Really, you're just playing for your pride and you're yeah. playing for your yeah. Wow, man, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Now, yeah. now I want to get into the, what the kind of the theme of this podcast is is about with uh, with you, and that's the work ethic. Um, you are famous, you know, for your work ethic. You know, so many people, you talk to your teammates and even some of the guys in Atlanta I was reading, they talk about the things that you do, you know, how, um, you know, how they'll, you'll, they'll finish practice and, you know, they'll get some shots up and they'll be showering, they'll be eating, they'll be leaving, and you'll still be on the court, you know, getting shots up, practicing your moves. And, you know, I've seen all the quotes from, you know, the guys in Fenner and even just talking to Gigi, you know, over here in our locker room, and that was the first thing he said about you, you know, that your, your work ethic, you know, that's, you know, that's what you're, you know, you're, I guess you say, the reason why you've been successful. Now, the question I have for you is, um, generally, do you think, and I think you answered this a little bit, but is work ethic something that you're born with, or is it something that you feel that you can be taught, um, or that where it's something that is developed over a course of time? I feel like it's a little bit of both, honestly. Yeah. You have to have something that drives you. I feel like you have to love something. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, I'm not the right person to answer you that because I love basketball. You know, yeah. and for me to put work for, in basketball was easy. But uh, like, I would ask someone who, um, who doesn't love basketball, how is for him to work on mm -hmm. a game that maybe he doesn't love that much, you know, but he's just tall or, you know, and he's being told that he's a basketball player. There's yeah. different type of you know, um, reasons that that some guys are playing basketball, you know. And for myself, like I always loved basketball. Mm -hmm. And when I came to Partizan, I didn't know. Like uh, before that, I was in uh, in uh, in Zhitko, which was junior team. Like, yeah. and, uh, and um, I had the. Uh, I had a pretty good coach there that, you know, he told me how to, you know, work on my individual stuff, you know, but you, you're a kid and you don't think like, okay, I'm doing this. Uh, there is a money involved. You know, I can make more, a lot of money. You don't think that way. You just go out and hoop. You just play, play the game. You enjoy the game and you don't know what brings you to the next level. You don't know how to practice the faster, a pull up you don't know how to practice the faster catch and shoot you don't know how to change your shot you don't know you need the good coaches around you and i was lucky that uh, i had dushko back then in partisan 
to work with me, to spend the hours with me. You know, he was uh, the thing I I always respected about him is what like he would he didn't tell me hey go out and shoot at 6 a.m. That's not it. Like he was a present there. He was with me, and he was all the time. I remember. I remember. I changed my shot when I when you saw my highlights from the uh, like uh, junior years days yeah. or my in partisan. I was shooting like way behind ahead. Yeah. And uh, my release was slow. And I remember when I was trying to get off the staggers, I couldn't release it quick. I, I, I had a problem and I was, you know, he was, um, you don't talk that bef- between the players because mm-hmm. you always feel, you know, someone can use it against it. Yeah. And you need to find, you need to find when, especially when you're younger, you know, and you, you just say the stuff that you're good in and the stuff that you're doing well, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone, all, all the kids. And they don't even care about what they don't know. And then if you have a good coach, like I was lucky to have him, you know, that um, he spent hours with me, you know, how to teach me and you have to believe in it. Like at the beginning, uh, you have to change the, all the muscle work you have, the muscle memory, the, you know, and um, you have to start over changing and, and, and uh, basically having a new shot, mm-hmm. you know, basically working on new shot and um i had that drive for the game i had that like motivation in me to go out and for me it was uh, especially in our countries like that which sometimes now i don't like it you know because i don't think <laughs> go again. You know, i don't think I'll go again. <laughs> i don't think i would go again yeah i saw a lot of different stuff and a lot of different ways of success you know with uh not I'm proud that I did it my way, you yeah. know, and I like, it. I like it my way. But I don't, I don't know if I can make it again. You know <laughs> Same half. <laughs> yeah, like, waking up, like there is nothing, nothing, nothing in this world that you should be interested in except basketball. Yeah, and I was like that for like two years, locked in, like two years, one and a half, let's say, one and a half, two years. I was locked in. I go up. Uh, uh, how much did how much did Dusko um, have an influence on you with that, or is that just something that you just like you said you eventually just develop in time? Like you just actually that time that moment you were just like I'm locking in for these next two years to make sure I'm a yeah. better player. Like, look, I was a young guy in Belgrade, yeah, uh, famous for like playing basketball for Partizan. I didn't even play. You know, I'm in roster in thir- yeah. thirteenth player of the team. But uh, Partizan is so like famous in Serbia, and you know you think you're important, but that's that's uh, um, that's something that you know no one no one could tell me, and I couldn't see. And you know you go in the restaurant, ah, we won, blah blah blah, good job. They telling you like you're playing, yeah, you know, but you don't realize you just feel well about it. And I didn't work on my game back then, and you know I I was working a little bit, but I didn't I wasn't locked in. You know that's the first time I'm getting money. That's the first time I'm, uh, you know, uh, having my own salary, having my own account, doing whatever I want with uh, with the money. So I had, I, w- I was spending around. I was just yeah. going up and, you know, young guy in Belgrade, going out every other <laughs> night, uh, a little bit gambling, a little bit, yeah. you know, like, because a little bit of everything. Fun. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little, you know, like basketball was, was there, it was important for me. But I didn't, I didn't have that like locked in moment. Like I didn't have someone explaining me, and maybe I was running from it away because I, I was entertained by other stuff. Yeah. And uh, I feel like you have to go through that. Yeah. You know, to see what what is what what is that stuff. And then um, yeah, I had that meeting with Dushko, and we were like, okay. Um, <laughs> I remember he gave me a paper, and he said, you have like. 10 minutes to write down whatever you are doing like what do you think is bad for you mm-hmm. like as a person and i write it down like okay alcohol you know partying um i don't know uh, not sleeping eating bad you know uh gambling i don't know whatever it came <laughs> on my mind and and he was he was he was giving me that like um you know i was just trying to make it i was just trying to yeah. i just want to play i was and that's that love of the game you know I, I was a hard worker but in these two years i wasn't yeah so maybe they, they, they maybe they were talking about me like 
back then, ah, oh, this kid is not working hard. Mm -hmm. He doesn't deserve it. You know? But I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know. But then Dushko came and he gave me that chance. He gave yeah. me the chance and I needed someone like him to to navigate me to to the right path, you know. And he was he was basically, you know, telling me, okay, I was living with the family back then, you know, and mm -hmm. he was like, oh, with the family right now, you have to live alone, find your own place. Um, every night, 12, 12 o'clock home, you call me from your, like, you know, the home phone. Yeah, yeah you so call me. Sure you... <laughs> call. You just leave, yeah. you know, one call, you're home at 12. Okay. Um, then you're going to eat only in this restaurant. Yeah. You know, because they will, they will give you healthy food. Um, then, um, you know, on off days, there is no off days for you. You you have to put uh, one practice a day on off days. And when you have one practice, you, you practice twice. And I liked it because it was new for me. It was like I was I was fulfilled with it. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have nothing to worry about. I was just worried about my game. And, and then... I start study. I study, and he was good at it. You know, he, we were watching the clips of. He was always asking, um, if you ask Jo Lovern, let's say. Yeah. I remember that he asked him, "Who's your?" Jo came with the um, weird shot. Yeah. He couldn't. But in partisan, he started raining, draining trees. <laughs> and, and you know, uh, Dule has that like motivation for you. He good. He can motivate you to get better. Mm -hmm. And he was asking him, like, who's your favorite player? And he, and he said, who's your favorite shooter? Who you want to look like? You know, and he said, Mirza Teletovic. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe said, and yeah. okay, we're going to watch some clips and watch him, how he's shooting. And every time you shoot, you think like you're shooting like Mirza, you yeah. know, like, and, and he was working with him too, like trying to help him how to, you know, and that's hours in putting hours and hours in work, like all this off time you have. You're in a gym, like there is some days that that's not. The, this is not a lie. Like yeah, yeah. we had me and Bert, like if you ask him to, like uh, we stayed morning practice. Team comes in the morning practice. You know we had twice a day. Let's say morning practice, and he give us a drill. Let's say ten in a row out of the staggers. Yeah, ten in a row, ten in a row, ten. In a row. And uh, you know, someday you get so tired you can't make it. It's more mental. You yeah. know, you just go of times and you cannot make it you know and then okay little break he gives you like sandwich from the spot next to the place we look at, a, at the clock it was 5 p.m wow the next practice was like seven you know like and we stayed in the gym we, I, we, I remember we took the nap like 30 minutes whatever and you know go and, and the second practice but we literally literally like, literally, like, literally, like, literally, I, literally lived in the gym literally lived in the gym <laughs> i wanted to be a basketball player that's it yeah. i don't want to uh, you know, he always say, if you want to be like a narco dealer or yeah. if you want to be a guy on the street that is famous and cool, go out on the street. Don't be a basketball player. Like, yeah. dedicate the time and go out and do that, that part. Like, I, uh, and, and then you understand a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's incredible that he, that, and I guess you, to, to, in order to develop that work ethic, you need to have somebody guide you. And the fact that he, you know, put in that work to guide you and in putting that effort to guide you, I bet you, you know, at the time you probably thought there were days that he was crazy and probably thought that like, yo, yeah. this, this is, this is insane. Why am I doing this? But I bet you now, as you gotten older, um, I'm sure you appreciate it more and I'm sure you probably thank him. And I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I will tell you this. I came to Fenner after that and I honestly, I stopped working a little bit at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't work that hard. And then I had like two bad games and I remember him talking about it. Like whenever you feel, and I lost my confidence a little bit back then. Mm -hmm. And I remember that moment and I was like, okay, what I was doing wrong. Did I do everything right? That is going to get me right for the game. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you, when you sit down with you and you be honest with yourself, you see wow. what you, I, I was, I was putting some shots. I yeah. was putting my shots up. I was putting my hours up. But I wasn't mentally there. I was yeah. thinking of something else, you know, and that, that wasn't me. And I, I, I just accepted it. And I say, okay, and that's the thing I learned, you know, about me. Like, okay, this, this is not, not the way that I'm built. I got to go hard. That's it. And then I, I started practicing hard 
and then I started getting better at the games, getting more confidence and all the other stuff, you know. Yeah, man, that's, that's incredible, man. Like I said, I've, I've heard... I, I heard so many stories, like I said, talking to people. And like I said, the first thing they mentioned is, is your work ethic, the, your your relentlessness, the, the, the fact that you're in the gym and you're always working. Now, the question I have for you, though, is like you talked about it, you know, this time when you were in Partizan and that was when you were young. But now you're 28. Um, you've accomplished so many things, you know, your league all decade, you know, you know, silver medal here, your league title here. You know, you have, you know, a, you know, a great contract, you know, you know, the last couple of years with, you know, SAC and even, you know, a nice contract with, with Atlanta, what continues to motivate you and what continues to drive you? You know, I think most people will be like, you know, well, this is enough, but you know, for you, you know, what continues that work ethic, what continues the fact that you're still in the gym, you're still playing and still doing the same things. And what, what is that motivation? I love it, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. I don't know how to, and, um, um, Sometimes I, you know, I had like, I had the days that, you know, you don't put, put enough work, you know, yeah. in it, and you, then you realize I get back to it, you know, like, okay, I got to work harder and that's it. Like, it's simple as that. Like, and I, and I'm always finding my confidence in the practice. I cannot mm -hmm. go. I'm not the guy. There, there's a different type of guys, you know, yeah. there's a the guys they just need to rest. There's a the guys, but for me, like, I would rather be tired but be, be fully confident that I'm doing all these moves, you know, then, um, you know, being well rested and fully mm -hmm. energized. You know? And that's just who am I, you know? And, um, but what else is motivating me is like, um, I know the championship is sounds far, you know, like yeah. winning a championship, winning, um, uh, like just getting better personally as a player, like what mm -hmm. is the next level of the game? can i can do it better you know um how to help the team my team win more games how to be more productive in defense here it's, it's tough or it's harder you know uh, to play against these physical guys and athletes mm -hmm. um and that rule three seconds in the paint is a huge change and and uh um you know and all this stuff you learn it you know and um that that that's that's a the other other motivation that I have, you know, besides, you know, individual uh, accomplishments. That's what's up, so man. Now, I have a few more questions. I'll let you go. I know you got to get your your pregame, your pregame routine in. Um, so right. for the for the kid that's in in Serbia right now, that's watching this and wants to be the next Bodan Bodanovic, or wants to be a, a professional, you know, basketball player. You know, what would your advice, you know, be to that kid? You know, in order to have a successful, you know, basketball career or just be successful, just period. First of all, uh, they have to have a dream. They have mm -hmm. to have something that they hold them in them themselves and keep motivating them. Some the, the dream that they love. You know that um, they are taking care of that dream. I, mm -hmm. I would like to say, like, um, and to be dedicated to that because there is. Um, there is nothing if uh, you can you can make nothing in any any type of job in this in this uh, in this world mm -hmm. um, without working hard. Like is 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 not about um, look uh, uh, to to be somewhere you have to be better than somebody else, mm -hmm. right? You have to like it's not just like hey they're gonna put you here and you're there. You know no. There is a twelve players in Partizan right now. There is a twelve players in there in Atlanta, in Milano, in Fener, everywhere. And there is always going to be 12 players. So you have to outwork and, 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 you know, you have to take the place of somebody, you know, you have to, you have to do it like in any, in every job, in order to do it, you have to work hard. There's nothing else. It's simple as that, but you always have to have that dream, you know, and, uh, you know, you gotta be locked in, locked in on it, whatever it is in, in any job, you know, and I know, I know um, from my story, I can tell them like, uh, of course, now it's easy to talk about NBA player. Yeah. Um, as I said, final product. Now yeah. you see it, you know, now you see it. Oh, um, his life is so good. He's like, man, what, what I went through, like, I, I feel a lot of like, a lot of, a lot of people, they don't know that. Yeah, they exactly. just know like famous from partisan, Fenner, uh, Kings and, and Atlanta. 
yeah. you know, NBA. Maybe, yeah. You know, like that's all they see. <laughs> what I want, I yeah. What I want to tell him, like, it, it wasn't real for me. Like, it wasn't real for me back then. You know, I I didn't believe it when I was in Partizan. I'm gonna be in Atlanta or in NBA, or, and I'm gonna have uh, this contract, and I'm gonna have that much value here. I didn't believe it, but I I took step by step, you know, and I always I I feel like if you build that base. You know that you always get back to you know back to basics and if you have that like base that you always get back to and you know how how you build it hard and how how much of the work you put it in you will always respect that and uh um you're always going to be humble you know with it and uh you, you you're going to understand it i think that's great advice Simple yeah, that's great, man. I appreciate appreciate you sharing that, sharing those gems, as as people would say. Now you mentioned it, like you said, you know, like I told you before, you're 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 a vet, I guess, in the league, but you're still a young vet. You're a young twenty eight. Where do you see yourself in in ten years? What is you know, where would you like to see? You know, if you could see thirty eight year old Bodan Vodanovic, what would you you know? What would you like to see yourself? You know, um, in your career. Well, <laughs> don't say that man i'm 34 man don't, don't say that man I'm, I'm getting close to 38 <laughs> oh my god uh, man that's too far <laughs> hey, hey man hey, believe me, it goes by just like this man be honest with you it goes by it goes by quick man i don't know man um i still love basketball i love the game i, mm -hmm. I see myself still involved in basketball i don't know Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I will play 38, but now everyone plays till 38, 40, <laughs> some, yeah. somebody. So I, I, I've seen guys playing to 40. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't see myself right now, like anything else besides basketball player right now. Like if you ask me right now, what will I will be with 38? Maybe, you know, um, maybe off court maybe you know finding the wife or mm -hmm. kids or something like that. but uh yeah definitely um in basketball player for sure yeah, i feel like you're going to be that that guy that said like you know 45 years old and, and still <laughs> still somewhere in the gym in serbia still playing <laughs> still <laughs> still out there hooping somewhere <laughs> Hey, maybe, man. Maybe, you know. <laughs> I love it. I, I, mean, I, I know that. I know that for sure. Now, last question. Um, it's a question I ask every guest. You know, your favorite current EuroLeague player um, and your favorite past EuroLeague player. Oof. Um... I like so many players, man, in Euroleague really right now these days. But um, my favorite Euroleague player, Jan Vesely, mm -hmm. I will tell you why. Um, he is most un unselfish player I ever played with. Mm -hmm. I swear. Um, and currently, I, I see what he does for the other guys over there. Yeah. So that's why I see him as the best, you know. For my, for me, he's the best player and uh, currently uh, Euroleague player, and uh, I know how much he's putting uh, in work to, you know, maybe maybe he's not uh, attractive as a guards, but he's attractive in his way, you know, dunking and blocking and uh, you know and all of the stuff, but he's putting so much work for that team to win the games, and I know yeah. that you know he he is really working to win the games. He don't care about nothing else. Yeah, stats man. i know what we've had we've been you know, like, we've had so, a lot of battles over the you know you, you've been a part of many of them but we've had a lot of battles you know playing yeah. against him and even still now man he's still still doing all the little things you know tapping the ball back you know every little thing man he's still man like you're it's it's the same type of the players right yeah, so you, yeah you know what i'm talking about and um and um the the ex probably I mean, I mean, there is a lot of them too, but Diamantidis was always my like mm -hmm. uh, favorite player that I, I looked up to it. Like, you know, he was playing for the big team back then, Panathinaikos, and 
you know, there was winning on, on my team, on my TV, he was like the guy, like, yeah. you know, he's, you know, the guy I, I, I see, but there is a lot of them and but the Roga, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, I'm, 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 and another favorite player as well, Jared Holden. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Man, he's amazing. He was amazing. Amazing was, player, man. Yeah, he's the. That, that's my top three. Let's say that I always have these three players. That's that's, a, that's Holden, it. Zer Holden, and Diamantidis, and Bodiroga. That's it, man. That's a that's a solid list right there, man. I'll go with that. <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, man, that's a great list, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you taking the time, you know, on the road and, um, you know, joining the podcast. Um, man, best of luck the rest of the season. Um, best of luck tonight. Um, you know, remain healthy and uh we'll, we'll for sure we'll we'll catch up soon somewhere, whether it's there, um, whether it's whether it's over here. All right, my man. Thank you for having me, really, and I appreciate it and keep doing the good stuff, man. I really I always support this, you know, you're right. as amazing player and off court as well as a person, you know. Uh, you play with a lot of my friends, so I know a lot about <laughs> more about you maybe we don't know each other a lot but we yeah, yeah. no nah, we we, so. we I, I yeah like i said I, I feel like we know each other i mean we've been yeah. you know in cirros and a couple other places we've been hanging out but like i said we have so many common friends that like we I, like i said i feel like i've, I've known more about you than, than yeah. you together yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right my god man take care man get some rest and uh we'll, we'll talk again soon good luck man all right appreciate it. all right